Welcome to Legislative Report. I'm State Representative Rosemary Brown. Homeownership is a personal benchmark for many citizens and an important key to a family's financial stability. And as we've seen in recent years, the economy of our state and nation relies heavily on a robust housing market. The Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency works to educate people about their housing options and also assist homeowners in helping them to avoid foreclosure. Joining me today to discuss their mission is Brian Hudson, Executive Director of Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency, also known as PHFA, which we'll refer to several times. Brian, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. This is um, for Monroe and Pike County, the district that I represent. Um, we have a tremendous change in our housing market and the status of many families unfortunately um, with some financial changes and so the I believe the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency is a, a great agency to help my constituents get to understand a little bit better and know what you do so we have a lot of information to cover <laughs> yes we do and um, I hope that that the people watching will will take away uh, this information and be able to utilize it so let's start just with the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency what is it, how does it work, and, and we'll take steps as we go forward. Uh, thank you. Uh, we're, we are a um, quasi-governmental agency where we were created by the state legislature in 1972. Our mission is to provide safe, decent, affordable housing for Pennsylvanians. And that's the short story. <laughs> uh, the long story is we are the Commonwealth's leading provider of affordable housing. Uh, we do that by selling taxable and tax exempt bonds in the open capital markets. Uh, we also get an allocation which is known as the low-income housing tax credit. It's a federal tax credit and that is the uh, primary source of capital used to create rental housing throughout the Commonwealth. A very competitive process. Uh, so that's part of our mission in, in, a, in a broad scope. Uh, I guess what I'd like to do is go back to the pre-crisis if we can, uh, particularly as it relates to Monroe County in 2003. Uh, we also have on our, rec on our books uh, the HEMAP program which is known as the Homeowners Emergency Mortgage Assistance Program. Now HEMAP was created in 1983 as a result of the downturn in the steel industry. So many steel workers were losing their home uh, and the state wanted to step up and say how can we help them keep their homes basically. Uh, since that inception HEMAP has saved over 47,000 homes from foreclosure in the Commonwealth. So it became a model across the nation. Uh, in 2003 uh, as you are aware Monroe County had some issues with foreclosures. You know we saw a spike in HEMAP applications coming in so we did a statewide study with the Department of banking. As it turns out, uh, the homeowners pretty much didn't know what to expect in getting a home. Uh, they weren't advised about escrows, taxes, budgeting, you name it, uh, as well as some appraisal issues that occurred. Uh, and in 2003, Pennsylvania ranked number nine in foreclosures in the nation. So as a result of that, uh, we implemented some uh, measures. Number one, that's the, that was when PHFA started its counseling network. Uh, and number two, we passed a series of legislation which required Pennsylvania to license mortgage brokers. And in 2003, we had some of the highest concentrations of subprime lenders. So fast forward to 2007, when the crisis hit, we were a little better prepared to deal with the crisis. We had already had over 100 counseling agencies in our network and we're receiving federal funds. So I bring HEMAP back into the picture because HEMAP became instrumental in helping unemployment. As you know, the unemployment rate skyrocketed uh, and HEMAP was pushed into action. A lot of my counterparts in 18 other states across the nation received federal funds, uh, TARP money if you will, to help unemployed homeowners. So we essentially had the model which was working. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about HEMAP in terms of how it's structured. It is a loan. Uh, it does have to be repay repaid. The minimum payment is $25 a month. As a homeowner is reemployed and get back on their feet, they have to recertify their income to PHFA every year. And then we gradually put them on our repayment plan. So it's not uh, an additional burden, if you will. Uh, our, our theory is that if we make a loan to help someone stay in their home, we want to make sure they stay in their home. It has an 85% success rate, entirely funded by the Commonwealth. Uh, and I mentioned uh, how many homes is saved from foreclosure, 47,000. HEMAP has lent over half billion dollars. Uh, so it became a, a national model. Tremendous. I, I don't know if you had any questions. Well, I, I think that, you know, one of the questions um, is, is when do homeowners, you know, as soon as they become unemployed, um, 
to try to, to put the application in out of fear? Or is it, you know, when do they say and they look at their financial status and say, I know that's a difficult question, but it's time that I apply for this to try to make sure that we don't run into a problem. Um, and it's only temporary, hopefully, before they gain employment again. Exactly. And the number one reason we see why, pe why homeowners slip so deeply into foreclosure is procrastination. Absolutely. Because they deal with that very same question that you're asking right now. Uh, the technical sense, they have to receive an Act 91 notice. But we like to get them before they receive that foreclosure notice from the lender. So if they're beginning to get behind on their bills, our counseling network is free. And we have uh, over 100 counseling agencies throughout the Commonwealth they can go to. So we do advertise and we try to push strongly the free counseling. And that would advise them on budget, managing their credit cards, uh, what's, what are their household expenses for entertainment, even utilities. So there may be help with other agencies throughout the Commonwealth to assist with their budgeting needs before they get the Act 91 notice. So let's say they've reached a point where they've gotten the Act 91 notice. Uh, at that point, they have about 33 days to get into a counseling agency and schedule an appointment to determine are they qualified for assistance. Uh, HEMAP does not cover FHA loans because FHA loans has their own loss mitigation program. So uh, if it's a non-FHA loan and they're in that situation for no fault of their own. So uh, a medical reason, which is one of the top reasons we see where homeowners are slipping into foreclosure, uh, divorce, or just a loss in income, meaning their hours have been cut back or they actually have lost their job for a period of time. Uh, but those are all eligible criteria which means that we will evaluate, take that application, and then provide assistance to them. And there are two, for, two forms of uh, assistance that PHFA would provide. One, we call arrearages. Let's say a homeowner has lost their job and uh, now they're reemployed back on their feet, but they're behind in a mortgage. So they just need to get caught up. And we call that a one-time, non-continuing arrearage loan. It gets them current, they're back on their feet, they stay in their home. Uh, the other case would be when a homeowner is on long-term unemployment or long-term medical leave. So they would need help making a portion of their mortgage payment. In that case, we'll make a portion of the mortgage payment for them to their lender until they're back on their feet. Again, the minimum payment is $25 a month and they're not required to repay until their income rises to a level where it does not uh, impede their ability to maintain their household. So it's a, it's a very flexible program is what we like to say. Yeah. They're not actually put onto a repayment schedule until their income rising and that needs to be recertified every year. I think the catch-up program is very interesting. Yes. Um, yeah. Because I don't know that many people even know that that's out there that you know if you've hit a rough time and you, you are back on track right but you are behind and, and to alleviate some of that stress and just help you work through it yeah. um, that's a great program it appears to be that's that's significant in that uh, many homeowners uh, have been you know in that situation where you know they've lost their job but it takes six months a year two years to find another job so their new in income can support the current mortgage but there's no way they can get caught up so that's where that rearage loan That's very in. common. I hear that story a lot Absolutely. in my district. It's very, very common. So and we see that across economy. the state a lot. I, I would probably say uh, at least 60% uh, of our loans are rearage loans. Uh, the rest are, the other 40% are continuing loans. Now the maximum amount of HEMAP assistance is $60,000. Uh, so for, for instance, and the a homeowner uh, can get $60,000, whether that comes on a time frame. Uh, we're in a higher unemployment environment right now, so we're talking about 36 months of assistance or $60,000, whichever comes first. That is the maximum amount of assistance that we can offer to a homeowner. Okay. The other um, topic that you mentioned a lot during this conversation was the counseling. Yes. And um, to me, that, that is always the most important because it almost keeps you out of the situation. I mean, there are, you know, unemployment issues and things that happen, but it helps keep you out of a situation and helps you budget even before you hit an issue. Um, when can a, a constituent become part of that program, even if they don't anticipate mm -hmm. a housing issue, but they do want help in, in their overall budget, can they utilize the service? Absolutely. They can go in at any time. As a matter of fact, in our home purchase program, we advise the counseling right up front. So say, for instance, a, a homeowner is considering buying a home, and we know it's, a, it's a, a very stressful time. They don't know what to look for, what to expect. So many homeowners don't have any familiarity with budgeting. Uh, what does it mean? I mean you, you're moving from a rental situation to you own a home. You can't call the landlord to fix the roof, things like that. So those expenses have to be budgeted for. So we recommend uh, counseling to all of our home buyers. It's actually required if their credit score is below 660 in our program. Uh, so we found 
found that to be very beneficial. But a homeowner who didn't get a loan through PHFA, for instance, can walk into any one of our counseling agencies and get free counseling. And we urged them to do that sooner than later okay. because the, the problems only compound for the longer that they wait uh, before they go in to see the counseling agency. So it's, uh, it's very beneficial to them uh, before they buy a home, but after they're in that home and they get into trouble, uh, then we encourage them to do that. And obviously, heat map is the backstop, but we would rather not use the resources get of heat map right. until it's absolutely positive and necessary. So. It, it seems like a great program and a great service mm -hmm. that's there at no charge, absolutely. really, on the counseling end. And um, if we go back a little bit, too, to um, predatory lending, mm -hmm type of situations and and I know that that's a very big conversation that you had spoke about almost the history mm -hmm. of some of our issues is there any are there any tips that you can tell people to identify uh, predatory lending I know you have a pamphlet out there yeah, if we have we have a pamphlet that has some of the details but you know the rule of thumb is always if it sounds too good to be true you should question it you know uh, and asked about the terms you know well if someone says I'll offer you a 1% loan now we know interest rates are low uh, our lowest interest rate now in our first time home buyer program is 2.95% for 30 year fixed rate money. So if a lender comes to a homeowner and says, we're going to give you a 1% loan, uh, that should be a red flag immediately. Uh, and no money down, you know, no out of pocket money. Um, if the fees are, are, are high, you know, most of it should be like one point, maybe a point and a half, depending on the size of the loan they're right. getting. Uh, so if you see something that says four points, five points, uh, all of those should be questioning. And quite truthfully, uh, since we have the free counseling network, uh, there should be no problem taking that uh, proposal, if you will, from any uh, offer of a lender to the counseling agency. Have someone else take another look at it. You know, this is a free service, and we would rather you question the details of that loan before you actually sign on a dotted line. And I can't tell you how many people sign on dotted line because most uh, home buyers are looking for, yes, I got approved for a loan. Right. Uh, so we're saying proceed with caution and make sure you look at the, at the facts. And, and we're here to help you, advise you along the way as you go through that process. So that's wonderful. So they can run that through you. Absolutely. And double check it. Um, when, when we were speaking also about um, the counseling and the services, when you look at you know what what in the in the past the percentage of income that is supposed to be you know geared towards your housing i want to go on that route a little mm -hmm. bit because mm -hmm. i think you know with the economy and things changing so much uh, people maybe are a little bit confused as far as you know how much of their income yeah. if they were to buy a house how much should they say they can afford what percentage of that does it include their utilities does it include their taxes and by us in monroe and pike county the the school taxes are, are pretty high so that mentality of putting that into their mortgage and what they truly can afford. Mm -hmm. so. Well, traditionally the rule of thumb is that 30% of the income should be for household expenses and we still stick to that with our home buyers. For instance, our average ratio is around 25% uh, of our homeowners uh, income expense is towards housing, 25%. Now during a crisis, uh, I've seen loans where it was as high as 60% uh, of their household income was going to our housing. To me, that's a red flag right there. That's that going to run into a problem at some point uh, down the road. So we still abide by the 30% rule. Uh, there are programs, for instance, FHA, you don't have to have 10, 15, 20% down, which has been happening now as a result of the coming out of the crisis and some of the new legislation that was passed is requiring some homeowners to have as much as 20% down. Uh, if it's underwritten correctly, and this is the problem uh, that was created in the crisis, that you had a lot of uh, homeowners getting loans with no documentation of income whatsoever or they were in that 60% range uh, for qualifying for that loan. But if it's documented correctly, it should be somewhere between 25-30% of their household income. Now you can probably go a little bit higher depending on what the, the expenses were, if it was a medical expense or something to that, to that sense. But normally that's the rule of thumb. We're right around 25% and we like to stick to that number. I always feel it's better to be more conservative Absolutely. on that end and safer and have more disposable income mm -hmm. than, than go up above what no. you, know, you can afford. Exactly. Fine, we're going to take a quick break mm -hmm. um, and we'll be right back in a moment with Legislative Report.
Did you know that Act 16 of 1999 honors one of the greatest leaders in the Pennsylvania House of Representatives? The Matthew J. Ryan Legislative Office Building, once known as the Capitol Annex, is located next to the main Capitol building and honors the late Speaker of the House, Matthew J. Ryan. Those who visit this building will observe the magnificent architectural designs providing eloquence and grandeur to the building. Known as one of the greatest members in the history of the Pennsylvania State House, Matthew Ryan started his career in the legislature in 1963 and was elected Speaker in 1981. His charisma and knowledge will forever be reflected in the building now named after this great legislative leader. Now you know. Did you know that the chamber of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives contains a painting depicting the 24 hours of the day? Located in the center of the ceiling, the mural titled The Hours was created by artist Edwin Austin Abbey. This wonderful masterpiece charts the setting of the sun, moon, and the many stars that grace the heavens. 24 maidens, who each represent an hour of the day, begin each day in light and gladness and ends in solemn drapery carried on still shoulders. Now you know. Did you know that Violet Oakley was the first female artist to receive a large commission for artwork done in a United States Capitol building? In 1902, Joseph Houston, designer and architect for the 3rd Harrisburg Capitol building, commissioned Violet Oakley to paint murals for the governor's reception room. He believed that Oakley's contribution would add interest to the building and act as an encouragement of women of the state. Prior to beginning her work for the Capitol, Oakley set out to England to conduct research for her murals. Upon return, she decided to center her artwork on William Penn and the founding of Pennsylvania. Oakley made sure that Penn's ideals of justice and peace could be seen throughout her work. In 1906, she completed 13 murals titled The Founding of the State of Liberty Spiritual and was placed in sequential order around the governor's reception room. These murals were some of the first to be installed in the Capitol. When Edwin Austin Abbey, another artist for the Capitol, died in 1911, Oakley was offered another opportunity to create murals for the unfinished Senate and Supreme Court chambers. Her work on the Senate murals, including International Understanding, was completed by 1919. Oakley then completed the Supreme Court murals, including the Divine Law, by 1927. Oakley is said to be the principal artist for the Capitol, with a total of 43 murals on display. She remains one of the greatest muralists in the United States. Now you know. Welcome back to the program. I'm State Representative Rosemary Brown. The topic for today is the services provided by the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency. And we're back with Brian, who has been really uh, wonderful talking about all the services that the um, Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency offers. And we left the, the conversation uh, before the break talking about the amount of um, percentage of your income of the household should be dedicated to housing and you mentioned there was very big discrepancies at times between 25 percent to 60 percent but really 25 percent is ideal to 30 percent mm -hmm. so I just want to clarify yes. with you for the viewers that are watching that that also that percentage would also include the school taxes right. utilities maintenance right yeah anything to maintain that household we call that housing expense uh, quite truthfully uh, one of the problems that we did see during the crisis not only in Pennsylvania but on a nationwide basis is that homeowners were not required to escrow for taxes and insurance their hazard insurance the mortgage insurance on their properties so that was left up to the homeowners so you can imagine getting a big tax bill for say fifteen hundred dollars and th throwing your expenses out of whack and s pushing uh, individuals into foreclosure. We require escrow of the taxes and insurance. It should be part of your monthly payment. So they, that has to be factored in. But all of those expenses that will be required to maintain that household would factor into that 30% number. Right. And that's where uh, we were went astray, if you will, as a nation in qualifying people for homes that they should not have purchased, quite truthfully. Uh, yeah. yeah, so if you have a $5,000 income, really 1500 Thirty percent. Correct. It really shouldn't. Your total bills for housing should not exceed that. Correct. For the month. Correct. Um, so well, okay. So now you're going to go a little further and talk about some other issues. Yes. Recently, we held a what we call a mediation uh, program in Monroe County. So let's say you're already in foreclosure. You know, you're there, uh, no fault of your own, or whether unemployment. But in any event, you're meeting your lender in court. 
uh, we have a mediation program that we were working with the courts in Monroe County as well as five counseling agencies in Monroe County to bring the lender and the counseling agency and the homeowner together to come to some sort of settlement before it goes to court. Uh, in some cases foreclosure can drag out for years. Uh, the lenders losing money, the homeowners are totally stressed. So if we can bring them together earlier and come to a settlement which would result maybe in uh, a sale of the property, a quick sale or short sale it's known in the business, or a modification of that mortgage for the homeowners. A lot of times what we find is that a modification where you drop the interest rate and you capitalize those late payments, meaning put them on the back end uh, and give that homeowner a, a, a helping hand, if you will, to stay in that home. Because foreclosure, the cost to carry that property, no lender wants to foreclose ultimately. Uh, they got to carry that property, maintain it, and those costs run in as much as $35,000 per property, uh, which is significant when we compare that to HEMAP. The average HEMAP loan is around $10,000 on a historic basis. Uh, currently, over the last two years, it's about $13,000. So as we were comparing those, we said, why don't we bring the lender and the homeowner together uh, uh, before the court so that everyone's on the same page and agree to some sort of workout process. Uh, and we were identifying five counseling agencies in Monroe County with what we call the court mediation program. They were American Credit Counseling Institute, uh, Consumer Credit Counseling of Northeastern PA, Commission of Economic Opportunity, uh, Community Action of Lehigh Valley, and NeighborWorks of Northeastern Pennsylvania. So those are the five that we have identified initially. And we're going to be working with them to help those homeowners who are already in foreclosure and are seeking process through, through the court system. Uh, but we like to catch them before they get to that point, Absolutely. which means use our free counseling network if you're beginning to slip back. Absolutely. Everything is better on the prevention, but it really makes sense. It makes sense for everyone involved mm -hmm. to make the best out of a difficult situation so that, and, and in Monroe County, I know we have one of the highest foreclosure rates in the country. Mm -hmm. So we are really struggling and I know there's a lot of people that are watching, um, unfortunately, that are very nervous and have been struggling for for a while. So if they haven't taken advantage of um, your service, I hope that they do reach out after this show and they realize there are some options out there for them and some people to help them Re reanalyze their situation and see if there's something we can do to help them. We, we hope so. I mean, it's a win-win situation, not only for the homeowner, uh, for the lender, uh, and certainly uh, what the courts is dealing with now is a backlog of foreclosure activity. So certainly. this could help clear out some of that backlog from the court system also. Yeah, the, the last I heard, I think we're about two years to two and a half years in our foreclosure process, which makes it very difficult exactly. for the courts. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that there's even more information that you have. Now, there's also a website. Mm -hmm. If you are a looking for a, a home to be a, a new first-time homeowner or to, to be you know there is a website that you can go on and look for some some rental houses yes. and for you can go to our website which is www.phfa.org uh, if you're looking for an apartment we have a, a apartment locator on that website uh, we have information for first-time home buyers and we have information for those who may be uh, slipping in foreclosure or need some counseling uh, on that website we have a county by county breakdown of the counseling agencies you're going to make an appointment to those agencies so we do encourage the public to uh, go to our website there's a lot of tools there that could help them uh, whichever way they may be going, whether they're looking for rental property or home ownership. Great. And can landlords also go on there to put their properties on there at a charge or, or no it's charge? It's free of charge, free of actually. Charge. And we encourage landlords to list their apartment units. Uh, that locator actually got started as a result of a disability network. So we were actually trying to initially target disabled renters. Uh, as it grew, and then we had the disasters of Katrina and Irene and Lee, uh, we expanded that to include uh, vacant apartments for anyone looking. So it's a very good uh, apartment locator, if you will, for someone who's been displaced or they're looking for a new apartment in a different location. Uh, and we encourage all landlords to enter their data because the more that enter their data, the better uh, website that we have for Again, for works for both people. That's right. Works for the person looking at, works for the landlord as well who's Ex looking for renters. Exactly. So um, that's great. Now, are there any um, any other issues that maybe we haven't covered that that you feel that that people watching should know? Well, I, I would say you know we have the first time first time home buyer network, which is really our, one of our flagship programs. Uh, we do about five thousand loans a year under that program. Uh, I mentioned earlier that our interest rate is two point nine five percent. Now that's our lowest rate in history. That's a thirty year fixed rate loan. Uh, and from the homeowner standpoint, if if you qualify, PHFA will actually pay uh, four thousand dollars towards your closing cost assistance. So 
we will help you get into that home. We also have an employer assisted housing program where we've been working with major employers in the area to partner with them for our first time home buyers who work for them. For instance, uh, I initially started in the western part of the state, but we stepped up and said, we'll put $1,000 in if you match it with 1000 And in some cases, we have right. employers putting up to $15,000 uh, into a uh, program for first time home buyers. So we do encourage you, uh, whether you're looking to buy your first home, to keep your home you're in, uh, or to rent an apartment, uh, to reach out to us, because uh, I think we can help uh, fulfill your needs, which is and part of our mission. That's a very <laughs> interesting program. I have, I have yet to hear of that, where mm -hmm. the businesses were matching with you yes. to try to help their employees. I mean, that's a great a great benefit. It's interesting as uh, employers, you know, and everyone's resources are strained a little bit. And initially we were talking with a company that was looking to cut their benefits. So I approached them and said, well, if you're going to cut some of the benefits, do something else can happen. you do something over here and offer $500 towards uh, a first time home purchase? Right. And I said, we'll match that with another $500. And it worked out very well. From that point, we were off and running right. uh, with a, what we call the EH, Employer Assisted Housing Program. And that's been working very well. And then we started reaching out to some of the colleges because what you find is that uh, the colleges want their teachers and professors to live around that area so uh, it's worked out very that well. That makes sense as well. It worked out very well for us. Good. Mm -hmm. We only have a couple minutes but um, in that couple minutes just to recap quickly um, the, the status across Pennsylvania mm -hmm. as far as what you feel the, the housing market, the foreclosure rates, I know it might not be as pretty of a picture as we want to hear but there's a slow return to the rebound of housing. I think it's going to take some time. As a matter of fact, we have a major conference coming up here in May, the Housing Forum, which I'd like to invite you to also. We have some nationally known speakers. Mark Zandi is one of them from Moody's Investor Service. Uh, uh, it's a slow rebound in terms of the housing crisis. Uh, in 2003, as I mentioned, Pennsylvania was ninth in foreclosures. Right now, we're about 34th in foreclosures in the nation. So uh, on a national basis, one in every 1,400 homes in Pennsylvania are in foreclosure. Uh, on a nationwide basis, Cases, that number is probably one in every 700 or 800 mm -hmm. uh, for closure. So we fared better during the crisis, but I attribute a lot of that to what happened in 03 uh, in Monroe County in particular that allowed us, was a wake-up call for Pennsylvania pre-crisis. Uh, now we have a major extensive counseling network, but we are seeing home sales to start to rebound. We're seeing new construction. Uh, we're working with the home builders, and we have a partnership with the uh, realtors, uh, the national realtors, the home builders, and the counseling agencies. We're all partners in this because we think the uh, housing market certainly was okay. criticized for pushing us into this uh, deep recession and I think it's going to be one of the catalysts that pulls us out of it. Uh, and we are, we're certainly uh, optimistic uh, based on the volume that we're seeing. Right now at PHFA we're doing about 20 million a week in mortgages so that's a good sign. That and is this a is, good sign. This is our slow period. Uh, as we ramp up through the spring and of course June being home ownership month we're looking to see a, a strong rebound but I think we're probably two or three years uh, out before we see see some normal levels. My counterparts in other states are still uh, struggling in Florida, California, and Michigan. They're still dealing with tough markets and a lot of backlog of uh, our foreclosures. So. Right, so we're faring a little bit better, which so, is good. Yes. Well, and, and, I, and I really appreciate you coming here to speak to Absolutely. me um, and to get the message out to some of my constituents because I really think that this is a great service, a great agency that has a lot to offer um, at no cost also and, and a very big need that we have in the district I represent. So uh, Brian, I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank and, you for um, the invite. A pleasure. Thank you. And I do have pamphlets available at my office at all times with the agency. So if anybody's looking for that, please feel free to stop by. But that's all the time we have for today's program. I'm State Representative Rosemary Brown. If you need assistance with any state government matter, please feel free to contact me at my local office or through my website. That information will be shown in a moment. Thank you for watching and please join me again for the legislative report.